In this episode, let's tackle style bindings and class bindings. Just as a little bit of setup, all I have here is just my View CLI app, and all I've done is just for my body, I've increased the font size, aligned it center, and put a little bit of padding over the top. I haven't added anything important just yet. So imagine this, imagine that we had this piece of data in our website. Let's just say it's a value of some sort, and I want to conditionally change the background or maybe give it an underline. So here's what I'm thinking. So let's create a div, and inside of it, we'll just put one, two, three. But then imagine that you have some piece of data. So let's add our data object here. Remember, it's a function that returns an object. And let's just say error. And error is originally going to be set equal to false. So if error is true, then I want a red background around this one, two, three. So to trigger that back and forth, let's add a button with a maybe type of button. And at click, remember at click is just an event listener. So when it gets click, I want to go ahead and set error equal to the opposite of error. Effectively, all I am doing is flipping error. So originally, error is going to be false. When we hit this button, we're going to set that equal to true. If we hit that button again, we're going to set it back to false, and so on and so forth. So what I can do here is we can add a class variable, but let's go ahead and bind it, right? So let's put the semicolon in front. That way, view knows this is a class binding style. So inside of here, we're going to have an object. And the way that it works is that your key to your object is going to be the class name that you want to give it. So how about red error? That's going to be my CSS class. So let's bind that to error. So if this is equal to true, then view is going to apply a class of red error. Now this class doesn't exist yet. So let's use the style block down here to make that happen. So let's add a new class of red error. And then let's go ahead and give this a background color of maybe dark red. Okay, let's give it a go in the browser. I do have my CLI tool running in the background. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So when I hit my button, the background changes. Now I don't have any text for that. So let's add a text to my button here. And let's say error. Refresh. Actually, I didn't even need to refresh. We have hot reloading. So when I click error, check that out. How cool is that? So we are able to change a piece of data and then have our UI change by the use of classes. So what we're doing here is we are applying and removing that red error class, this CSS class here. So we're adding a background color of dark red to it. So what else can we do with this? What if we wanted to have maybe two classes? How about let's add another one of yellow warning. And we'll set that equal to warning. It's a new piece of data that we don't have just yet. So let's add it in now. So warning will be that. And then let's create maybe another button for this. And we'll say we're going to change warning this time. And let's just call this button warning. So now that we have this, of course, we need that yellow warning class. So let's add that down here. Yellow warning. And let's give this not a background color because obviously we have a background color here. Let's do the underline. So text decoration underline. Just something simple that we can see in the browser. So if we hit warning, now we have that and we still have our error. And we are successfully applying and removing these two classes. Now, obviously, the purposes of this demonstration with the buttons is just to show that we can interactively change this. But this could be data that comes from your database or something like that. So just keep that in mind. These buttons here are just for an example of something like that. But this could also be useful if you had maybe a drop down menu. And when the user clicked on the drop down menu, maybe you wanted to apply a class somewhere else in your application. So a lot of uses for this. This is just a very basic concept of it. So let's take it to the next level. So we have this object right here, but we can extract this object and put that as a computed value. Let's explore that for a second. So let's add our computed property. So we'll say computed. And this is going to be equal to let's call it class object. And so class object will be a function. And let's go ahead and do what we need to do here. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring my object from here. I'm going to cut it out. And let's go ahead and return that object instead. Let me change this. 
All right. So now that we have that, now we no longer can use error, but we have to use this dot error and then this dot warning. And then up here, where we removed that object from, we can use that new class object. And so now what we've done is we've essentially extracted that into something that can be used in different places. So that's pretty cool. Functionality wise, we have the exact same thing. But if for some reason we had this somewhere else in our app, and now we have two of them, now we're affecting both of them directly. But that's not really why I extracted that to show you. Let's tweak this example a little bit. Let's imagine that this object here is maybe a counter of some sort. And when you reach a certain level, it needs to turn red. And if it's under a certain level, then maybe it's just green for it's okay, almost like a warning and error type of class. So let's add another button. Let's actually add two buttons. This one is going to be a plus sign. And this one is going to be a minus sign. And let's do the following. Let's add a new piece of data here before I do. Let's set value equal to one. So this is going to be our initial state for a value. So instead of one, two, three, let's go ahead and use value. And when I click the plus button, I want to increment value. So we can just say value plus plus. When I hit the minus sign, let's go ahead and decrement value minus minus, right? Nothing crazy here. Let's go back plus and then minus. That's all we're doing. We're just increasing and decreasing our value. So now what we can do is that instead of just red error, if this error, but rather we can do if this value is greater than five, then go ahead and maybe do the red error instead. All right, let's try this. Let's go ahead and increment. And then there it is. So the minute our value goes above five, that class automatically gets added to our div up here. How cool is that? So now we are actually doing it interactively. So that's the nice thing with having this in its own separate object. Not only can you reuse it, but you also have the power of JavaScript at that point to do anything else. So let's talk about style binding. So this is for a class, but there's something similar for style, like inline styles. I'm going to add a new one of these. And now let's go ahead and do the same thing. But this time, let's do it for our style. So let's pass in an object into style. And what I want to do is I want to use value, whatever value is as the font size for this, but I want to do it in line. So check this out. Let's change the font size. Now we can't do font size the way that it would be in CSS. We have to do it kind of the JavaScript way. So font size, capital S and no dash. We're going to be changing the font size. Let's change the font size and set that equal to whatever value is. So now when we increase value using the plus and minus, we can change the font size of the second div that I've added here. Now, the only thing that we need here right after value is that it needs some sort of unit. So we can actually add that as another string here. And let's just say pixels. So value will be the digit. And then we need to add PX for pixels. All right, let's give this a go and see if it works. So let's go back here and let's start to increase it. It's kind of hard to see at first. But as you see, as we are increasing this number, this font size is getting bigger. To make this a little bit easier, why don't we maybe do times 10? So whatever value is times 10. That way it's a little bit easier to see. And right away, we do see a huge difference here. So if I refresh, let's go back to 1. As we increase, you see how the font size is being calculated on the fly. Pretty cool. I like the style binding. So this is an easy way to create charts and things like that, where visually you want to reflect whatever the value is giving you. Pretty cool stuff here. Now, if we wanted to do the, the green example, let's say green error. I know that doesn't really make sense to be an error, but let's just say if it's less than or equal to five, then I want to apply green error. All right, so let's change that here. And let's change this to a green, maybe just a dark green. And let's change our class name to green error. All right, let's go back here. And sure enough, so now it's green. But remember, once it hits above five, now we're red. So this could be a way for us to manipulate the background of this dynamically. So with that being said, Go ahead and play around with this a little bit in your view CLI or view project that you've been working on. And when you're ready, let's go ahead and move on to the next episode.